All right, we are live. All right, it is uh, Tim Burzens here with Trent McCloskey. What is going on? On the Train, Eat, Live with an Amplified Metabolism podcast. Yes. Uh, that's our working title so far. <laughs> if you guys have been following, we've been having a working title for like the last five episodes. Yep. Now I was thinking about this, like if you have a kid and you name the kid John, or you don't know what to name the kid, so you're like, let's call him John for, for now. And then like a year goes by, like that kid's name John's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just kind of keeps it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it would be way more stressful to change it. But anyway, um, so in this episode, we kind of wanted to zoom out and, and talk about something a little less scientific, but much more diagnostic. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we mean by that is we're not, we, we might go into some of like the physiology, chemistry type of stuff, uh, but we're going to keep it a little more practical, a little higher level. And the reason is because we're talking about something that uh, can't quite be studied, or it can be studied, but uh, it's just different. I, I don't know how to explain it, but mm -hmm. the topic that we're going to be going into is body awareness. And uh, you know, a big reason that it's so important is because if you aren't aware of how your body is responding, or you're not in touch with your body, then you're going to miss, uh, you're going to misdiagnose yourself, or you're not going to understand what's causing different problems. Um, when you when you become much more aware of your body, mm -hmm. the problem becomes evident to you, and you can fix yes. it much more. Yes. So I know. So Trent, I know you had a lot of some interesting stuff on uh, on this. Um, so uh, what what were your thoughts on on body awareness in general? Yeah. Well, the first thing I think nowadays, well, to piggyback on what you were just saying, if you're if you don't have a good sense of body awareness, which again is going to be a practice that you build and build upon, you're missing that vital feedback. And how you were saying that it's like, we're not going to be diving into that scientific stuff, but all the actionable items that we've been talking about in the past five or so episodes, body awareness is going to be giving you that feedback, you know, so you can actually like diagnose yourself and see if you have to tweak something or continue moving forward. But ideally, it's like, this topic was really um, interested, interests me in a way that nowadays, everyone seems like they're cut off, you know, from the body down, they're only up here stuck in their head. And they're just mm -hmm. going about their days, going through the motions and not listening to what their body is telling you because there are so many things. And if you're pushing your body through too much stress or really borrowing from the next day, what we were meant talking about in like the last episode, it's mm -hmm. going to start to like whisper. You're going to get, start seeing like these little signs of like fatigue, low energy, trouble sleeping. And if you don't listen to these signs or have that body awareness, things are going to get much, much, much worse in a sense. Yeah. I like how you just put that. Um, mm -hmm you're going to get whispers. Mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful because literally it's not, it's not like someone's gonna, um, you know, come up to your house and put a, a thing <laughs> on your door that says, Hey, you don't respond to carbs. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yep. like, exactly. it's going to be yeah. much more like, Hey, very soft. Like, Oh, okay. Yeah. You'll completely miss it if you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. But if you're completely aware of your body, then you're going to, when you eat carbs and this is just an example, when you eat carbs, mm -hmm and be like, oh, that didn't really feel, feel right. And then when you have the awareness from multiple meals, you can start to put some pretty interesting pieces together. Yeah, exactly. Or not even just carbs, anything you eat that is causing you some kind of digestive stress where it's like exactly. bloating or like gas or something like that. It's like, those are like little whispers that can continue to build and build until it actually screams. But if you actually get a scream, right, it's probably gonna be yeah. like, you're gonna be in some in the hole and then you gotta dig yourself out. And it's gonna be worse. Um, yeah. We actually just mentioned this on the last episode of like, that balancing act of operating there. But if you stress yourself out too much, you got to pull yourself out of that hole. In the mm -hmm. I kind of, uh, it reminds me of like Tony Hawk's pro skater where like, yeah, I you, love those games. <laughs> this is, this is a, this is a deep, deep cut right now, but like you go and you grind on the rail and you have to balance. Yeah. And like, if you get here, it's way harder to pull yourself back. Cause then you're, you're likely to go all the way yeah. to the other side and you're going to fall. Yeah. But if you can keep it here, it's really easy to stay here. It's yes. when you get here that you start to fall out of balance. 100%. You're going to get all the way down the stairs on the railing. <laughs> you're, you're going to tumble. You're going to go for a spill. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's awesome. I think the sooner you can catch the whispers, the mm -hmm. uh, less you will need to experience the screams. 100%. And especially in today's age where it just, in, in this society where it's just go, 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 it's like, we're so good at draining our batteries, you know, listening to those whispers to actually not only just like have good energy and just like feel great, but also just to honor yourself and your body and just to, you know, get the most quality of life, right? Because if you stress yourself out too much, then like, what's the point of whatever you're doing, right? If you're mm -hmm. not having a good quality of life. And I think this is really, I know this is a big part of whenever I started really improving my body awareness where things really started to be like, wow. Um, 
a little snippet just to relate this. Whenever I was like back, back in like my early like fitness days, I was only focused on, let's just say calories in versus calories out, you know, and bulking in a sense of just eating whatever I could. And I wasn't listening to my body. Yeah. I was gaining some weight, um, and making some progress, but all the bad foods that I was eating was impacting my health, tearing apart my digestion. And it took me a long time. And this is like now leading into Florida that I went through some crazy digestive issues, you know, even like some hormonal issues where my sex drive was dropped and like my testosterone was probably low. Um, Just all these issues because I wasn't really listening to my body and how I was feeling eating these certain foods. So it's like now flashing forward, making the best progress in my fitness journey because I'm actually listening to my body, feeding it the good foods and improving my health and working with my body, which then in turn is like allowing me to get those results plus also increase the quality of living. If that makes sense. It's a little snippet. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. What you'll take care you what you love, you'll take care of. Mm-hmm. So if you love your body, you'll take care of your body. But mm-hmm. if you are trying to control your body to get something out of it, to, to, to look good for this external thing. Right. Then you're like kind of forcing, it's like, you're, you're kind of being like a slave driver to your, to your body and being like, do what I say so that I can get the benefit out of it. Like right. we're all little tyrants inside mm-hmm. trying to like dictate what should happen and everything. It's like, <laughs> yeah, let go a little bit and like enjoy your body and appreciate your body, respect it. Um, rec- and I mean, even, I know this is easier for, for, for us cause we've been researching it so far, but once you see like, all the different things that your body's doing and these complex different physiological reactions and and interactions and um, just Mm -hmm. amazing flows and all these systems, you start to like become so appreciative of like how much your body is doing for you. Yes. Uh, It's insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. Which um, to add on that, it's like a lot of people I think have a problem nowadays of actually like loving themselves, especially if you're not in a necessarily a spot where you're happy with your body. I know that definitely trips up a lot of people as well. So I think this is related, like if you can start to increase your body awareness, that is like one of the maybe say first steps to getting um, more in tune with your body and loving your body for where it is right now, setting you up to let go and kind of move forward. If that makes sense, Mm -hmm. you have anything like that there? Because I know that trips up a lot of people of like this, oh, love yourself now. And then sometimes it's always hard thing to do. You know what I mean? So what would you like, you have anything like to add there? Yeah, well, I think that um, people want to look good. Mm-hmm. so that they can have permission to love themselves. Right. Yes. And, to, and because it, in their minds, there's this idea of like, oh, I look good and I, and I feel, and I have a healthy body and all this stuff and I'm getting the appreciation and the approval from others that I want. Now I can be happy. Now I right. can enjoy myself. Right. But that is the most backwards way you can approach it because as soon as you get that thing, you're going to have fun with it for a little while and then you're going to go mm-hmm. right back into wanting something else. Um, this is a way, way bigger topic than we're going to cover today, but it really is about like letting go of needing the permission slip from the world to mm-hmm. love yourself. And when yeah. I say that, it's, I don't even mean it from like the hippie dip, like what I would call hippie dippy, which means that it's like disconnected from the like core truth of reality. One of my favorite quotes is that compassion, true compassion, mm-hmm. true love is not some light frivolous thing. True mm-hmm. compassion can cut you open and operate on you if that's the best thing for you at that moment. Mm-hmm. It's hard when it needs to be hard. It's soft when it needs to be soft. Yes. So when I say that, that's beautiful. if you love your body, <laughs> yeah. you might need to like whip your body into shape sometimes if it's doing something that it shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. But what you'll end up finding is that your body is much more connected to the world and to the outer environment and to life than mm-hmm. you in your little mental room controlling, trying to control everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, your body is way more connected to all of that. And so you'll start to learn that it's, it's less about whipping it into shape and much more about respecting what it knows that you maybe aren't seeing. Mm-hmm. So you start to listen to your body. When I say listen, what I mean is stop talking, stop mm-hmm. controlling, stop being the one saying, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. Say, wait, hold on. Okay. Let me receive. Let me listen. Let me, what's, yeah. what are you, what's going on with you body? Like, how are you mm-hmm. feeling today? Like, well, oh, why are you feeling that way? Oh, because you, because I ate this food yesterday. Like, that's that, yeah, really like a shitty yeah. meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I understand. And then when you do that, like you'll start, if you really get into that mode of thinking, you'll stop wanting the shitty food because why would you want to hurt yourself like that? Yes. Yes. Really subconsciously eating shitty food, food that you know is shitty for you is a way to try to like escape with a short term pleasure mm-hmm. as a way to suppress the fact that you don't really love yourself you don't really love yes. your body if mm-hmm. you did love your body you wouldn't want to hurt yourself like that 
Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Oh God. I, I had a, a couple of things hit me. The first being related to that is like the, the shitty food part. A lot of, I see it in the fitness space time and time again of like people, especially uh, the women as well. But even if you're on like a crash diet, um, the, the binge eating, you know what I mean? Because you're not necessarily present in the moment, giving what your body needs to actually nourish it right now. So it's like that usually ends at the nighttime. It's not even like your, um, the, what it like the frontal lobe, it's more like your reptilian brain saying, I got to freaking survive. And then you like eat everything in sight because you weren't, you know, aware of your body, what you were feeling, what it actually needs in the current moment, building you up throughout the day instead of like, Oh, I'm just going to starve myself throughout the entire day. And then all of your body, your body's like, instead of the whispers, it's screaming to you. I need freaking food. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, exactly. Yeah. The one other thing I, I love the part you were saying, like the only permission you need is from yourself. If you give mm -hmm. yourself that permission, that's when everything love and the acceptance can flow through you 100 percent. and then you'll get and then you'll get the thing you want anyway yeah but exactly. it won't but it won't matter because you're not placing all this worth the only reason it matters so much to you now is because it's it is the permission slip mm -hmm. all of your love for yourself is in this thing and if you could just get it you would be able to feel really really fucking good mm -hmm. but if you as soon as you say no i'm gonna feel good now anyway and just enjoy myself then things are great and then that thing comes to you anyway in a, the easiest way possible exactly Except now it's not this crazy golden goody. It's just like, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an expression of your worth rather than the cause of it. Right. Exactly. And kind of, this sounds like a little hippy dippy, but it's not, it's people getting stuck in seeking that external validation whenever they should right. actually be looking inwards, but it really yeah. like it is. <laughs> and then you get both in a sense because yeah, it's coming from your expression. I love how you said that. Yeah. 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 Um, but you had just said about the uh, reptilian brain taking over. Um, mm -hmm. The frontal lobe is responsible for the executive function, mm -hmm. which is kind of what, we, what we consider the will, what we consider the probably, yeah. you know, where, where the ego would be, where the, the directive capacity, the directive capacity of your mind. Um, and the reptilian brain is much more connected to the body as far as like uh, hearing the signals from your body and understanding, like knowing what physiologically is happening. It's mm -hmm. geared towards your survival. Um, mm -hmm. If you like, you know, in all fitness circles, they say that there's a phrase, uh, um, your body doesn't care if you look out on the beach, it's trying to help you survive mm -hmm. like that, that sort of thinking. Right. Yeah. Um, and on the last episode, I, we had just talked about this where, you know, I was saying like, I had pretty, I have pretty good willpower in general, but like when I got to my leanest doing a zero carb diet and way over exercising, like I had, I'm not kidding you. I had like, I think it was a 52 ounce bag of pretzel M&Ms <laughs> an entire day. And I yeah. felt like complete shit about myself. Cause I was like, why couldn't I control myself? Like yeah. literally you cannot control yourself because the brain takes over and it says, we need food enough mm -hmm. of this stupid trying to look good for something that doesn't really matter. Like yeah. eat. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I think, um, where was it going with that? Um, for body I, awareness. I, I think, yeah. Well, it's yeah, okay. So yeah. Yeah. So body awareness, we were, we were talking about, um, uh, I was thinking of a really easy way to start with body awareness. And one of the things that I started doing when I moved to Florida, which is when I first started getting into the Matt Stone type of stuff, the Ray P, the Danny Roddy, um, the, the basically flipping the physiology upside down where now you're looking at the flow of energy and how that works and body temperature and all that stuff, um, was simply to wake up every morning and measure my body temperature. Mm -hmm. And literally doing that every day for an entire year you start to see this number. So I think that there, there's an awareness, but then when you have an external uh, objective number that you can say, yes, that is true, or no, that's not true, mm -hmm. it starts to help you validate your own experience. Mm -hmm. So if I woke up and I was like, oh, oh, I can barely open my eyes. Like, I don't want to wake up for the day. Like, I just feel so stiff and so tired. Yeah. I could tell you my temperature was going to be like 96 or like probably not. Yeah, I think mine was whenever we started doing this, mine was around like 95 as well. It was low. Mm -hmm. It was kind of shocking. I was like, damn, I, I didn't necessarily like think I would be that low. But then it really starts to get you to think like, okay, well, what has my lifestyle, what have my habits been looking like? I think that's a very actionable way of, because I want to also add, but I want to finish the conversation of measuring temperature. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to leak it out now. Meditation has been one of my biggest, biggest things, as I feel like it could be for many others. Um, way to increase my body awareness but diving back on the temperature that was more of like a a logical way to look at it and think about it. like okay wow i need to look at some things to actually start improving and get my body temperature up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and so similarly though like you'll have days when you wake up and you feel great mm -hmm. and your temperature is up 98 pretty high it feels good 
And yeah. so like having that feedback, uh, it's a good step because if you don't really have a lot of body awareness, then you have this external thing that you're looking at, this external measurement. Mm -hmm. And when you get the measurement, then you ask yourself how you feel and you start to make this connection. Yes. Well, that's, that's the bridge between the external world of numbers and symbols and the internal world of feeling and connection. Yes. So when you can start to become aware of that, you'll start to be able to see how your body is. You mentioned meditation. And I think that most people think of meditation as I'm going to sit quiet. And, and even people who know how to meditate, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to sit and I'm going to be quiet or I'm going to listen to a hum or I'm going to uh, listen to my breathing and just kind of like go brain dead for a little while. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. That's a, a good start to it. But meditation doesn't need to be a formal, it, I mean, it, it should be because there's a lot of benefits to it, but right. even just the recognition throughout the day, I think is actually yes. more important. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's almost the recognition and the meditation are, they go hand in hand mm -hmm. um, because the meditation will deepen your awareness to this like deep, deep level where mm -hmm. now you're aware of all these things you couldn't even, could never have seen before. Right. But that's not going to do anything for you if you aren't practicing it through the day. The recognition is that that constant bringing back, constant bringing back, constant bringing back to like, what am I feeling? Okay, I go into my day. Okay, wait, what am I feeling? Okay, right. now I go into my day. Okay, what am I feeling? You have to come back to yourself repeatedly, 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 repeatedly. And then you deepen it with meditation. And then the next day, come back to it repeatedly, come back to it repeatedly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, are you just going, yes. The checking into your day is super important as opposed yeah. to um, the more I'm going to sit down for 15 to 30 minutes or however long and actually have a formal meditation. I love the difference there, which both are intensely so freaking beneficial, but I'm going to love how you said like checking in. Like for example, a good thing, most people were running through their day. Um, what was the character name that we had? Was it Jerry? Yeah, Jerry. Jerry. So Jerry, after he just got hit in the hallway and all of his papers scattered everywhere, he is just running to lunch now and he's scarfing down his lunch without even chewing or just enough to like swallow his food, but he's eating in that stress state which then in turn is going to, you know, cause the bloating and all kinds of probably digestive issues where if you're not, if you're cut off, like I said, from the body or the head up, you're not really necessarily, you might be, oh, I'm bloated, but you're not really understanding what's going on here. If you understand like it connect with your body and listen to how it's feeling, you can start to go, oh, wow, maybe I actually just like shovel down that food and actually actually slow down, take a couple deep breaths, check in. Wow. I just got hit all my papers in the hallway or scattered. I need to take a mm -hmm. couple deep breaths and calm myself down and then enjoy my meal and then get back on with my day as opposed to that constant rushing. So I love that, like constantly checking in with yourself throughout the day. Like, how am I feeling? Am I hungry? Was that meal that I just ate not really um, satisfying to me? Or was it like shitty and now I feel tired? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think a big part of the awareness too is gaining the objectivity mm -hmm. um, to objectify your subjective experience. So to really gain awareness of your body, you have to almost like see, see yourself outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Let yourself go on while you stand aside and just watch. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that enough times with your body, things are going to start to become really cool. Actually, uh, you're going to see things in a, in a way, in a way higher perspective. Um, I actually had a recent breakthrough uh, with lifting Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't lifted for a while. I was rock climbing for, for a good bit and recently got kind of that bug to start doing some, some lifting again. So um, I started doing starting strength, which was it's a very basic program. A good one for anyone who's looking to just get into weightlifting for, uh, who's just starting out. Um, and the book, the book teaches like the big lifts. So it's, if you want to read that one, I definitely recommend it. Um, but anyway, I, in doing it, allowed myself to step outside of myself and watch while I was doing the exercise. And what I noticed was this very synergistic respect for the weight mm -hmm. in a way where instead of trying to be like, I have to conquer this weight so that I can, you know, so that I, I can be good, whatever that means. It was like a respect where it's kind of like this give and take this conversation with the weight. It's almost like mm -hmm. me and the weight are having this battle, this dance together. And I got to mm -hmm. try to, um, to, sh to, to live up to my end of the respect that it has this like heavy weight in the world. It's very yeah. hard to describe, and a lot of people listening to this might be like, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Like, I totally yeah, get yeah. that. No, I, I feel but, you. I feel you. But what will happen, but that, that's maybe a more extreme version of this, but what will happen mm -hmm. is that you'll go through your day having this deeper awareness, feeling good in your body, and being connected with that inner body, being connected with every cell, every sensation within your body, and feeling really good about it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll eat something, or you'll do something that shifts you into the stress mode. And mm -hmm. because you're so aware 
you're so sensitive to your body, yes. whether it's in a stress mode or a relax mode, you will not be able to miss it. You yes. will know I just shifted into the stress mode. What the fuck did I just do? I need to look at this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yes. That's how you find your personal problems and your personal issues. Mm -hmm. That's self-diagnosis right there to a T. That's self-diagnosis. Yes. I thought you were about to go in a different, um, from the weightlifting story you were just explaining, which is awesome. I thought you were going to dive into gratitude there. Um, so we can maybe touch on that in a second. But I yes, tying it all around the self-diagnosis. That's literally it because I literally can... And again, this is all coming back to a practice. You know, you might not get this on the first try, but I think it, it builds and it almost like builds exponentially. Like as you become more and more aware, you get greater, greater awareness. It's just like blows up really fast to where, you know, like, oh, wow, I just ate this meal. I feel super bloated. Okay. Well, what was in that food? You can kind of dive in that way. Or gosh, you woke up super tired. You know, this, that you can look at your sleep, like things like that. And then you start to actually pinpoint it where, as opposed to you just going through your day, going through the motions without ever you know, realizing this stuff. And then you mm -hmm. actually realize it whenever you get the screams of like maybe a health issue or something mm -hmm. like that later down the road. And ultimately all change comes from awareness. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing changes yep. without awareness. Yes. So yep. when we're talking on this channel and, and you guys listening to this and getting a lot of like the scientific explanations for things, we're building, what's happening is that you're becoming aware of something you didn't know before. So that's what learning yes. is. You're mm -hmm. learning it, but you're learning it intellectually. And so as you learn these things intellectually, they kind of condense, they form this cloud. It's like water particles in the sky that start to come together and form this cloud. Well, that cloud is useless until it's grounded, which means that you need to have the light of an aha experience, which means that intellectual information becomes experience and therefore becomes mm -hmm. wisdom as mm -hmm. far as what your body knows and as your experience goes, that cloud will strike a bolt of lightning to the ground. And that's that aha moment where the sky has connected to the ground. The intellect has connected to the experience. And now it's knowing, now it's wisdom, now it's within you, it, it's who you are. It's not something that you just know or you think. Right. And that is where real change comes from. You can manipulate your diet for hours and hours and hours and maybe have very minuscule change one of these lightning bolts in your entire body will change. That's mm -hmm. like, that's how powerful this stuff is. It has to be come, it has to come from experiential awareness and mm -hmm. the connection of the intellect to the experience mm -hmm. rather than isolating the intellect as an island. Yes. And then you could actually put that into action and make those changes. But again, exactly. if, you, if you never have that awareness, you never know what to change. Yeah. And, and yeah, simply put, which is huge. And I love, yeah, I was really just starting to think about that. Or what, what were you saying? I was going to say, even as you said, um, with that awareness though, it's not even like you have to put it in, into action. You want to put it into action. Like you're excited to, because mm -hmm. it, you, you see it, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. see how your actions are affecting something. And so you're excited to do the action that's going to have the effect that you want. Right. Exactly. Which I think is also just related back to, um, this, how you were saying, it's more of like, you want to do that as a, like out of respect for yourself. It's yeah. kind of related there. It's kind of a connected thoughts there, but yeah, I really like yeah, how you explain that. Respect yeah. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, one hundred percent. Love is directional uh, to the power. So mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about this before about like there's uh, there's two components to the mind: the the, direct, the directive and the generative. Mm -hmm. um, a lot like the the Kabbalion and Hermetic uh, her, Hermetic uh, um, philosophy will call it the masculine feminine mind. So you can call mm -hmm. it whatever you want. Um, but the direction says we're going in this direction, mm -hmm. and then it's useless without the power, the power mm -hmm. that fuels you to that direction. Yeah. The power is useless and chaotic without direction. So mm. it's two poles of the th two poles of the same object that you need. Yes. Um, so when you when you know where you're going, and then you can the that's the direction, and then you respect your body, you respect yourself, and you respect the power of that animal. Mm -hmm. Then you can direct. Then you, as the rider, can direct the power of the animal because they're in harmony. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. Yes. I know what I was going to say right before I was going to tie back in gratitude because I think coming from that place of gratitude and also using that as a tool to increase your body awareness is super important because say, for example, you're just going about your day and maybe you're frustrated, uh, you're stressed or whatever it may be, but always coming back to that sense of gratitude, like, wow, my heart's beating. Like when's the last time for anyone like listening to this, that you just like took, you know, a few seconds, minutes, even just to like rest your hands in your heart and feel that beating kind of like a little hippy dippy, but again, you got to bring yourself back into that present moment and actually feel your heart beating and have 
um, respect and just gratitude that it's actually supporting you. And I like how you explain like the little tyrants and you're like, Oh, I want to do this, do this. I want to lose fat, do this. And you know, support me. It's like, you have to support your body, listen to your body. That's where the whole this basis of like body awareness really comes from. Because if you're not grateful for that, or as you become more grateful for it, you have more respect for your body and will support it. And you know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's like a, it's like a, all of life is a relationship between mm -hmm. you, the eternal subject and whatever object you're focusing on, mm -hmm. whether it be your body or whether it be your bank account or whether it be a significant other. Mm -hmm. So I think the best way to think about that is significant other relationships. You need to respect the other person. You need to recognize that you can't control them. You know, if, if you have that sort of relation, like that sort of romantic love relationship with your body, Mm -hmm. then you're going to want to, you're in love with your body. You're going to want to just give, 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 give everything you can to your body. And then it'll give and, back. <laughs> and your body will give back. Exactly. And that is literally where all the joy lies. Like that's, mm -hmm. it, that, there is not any real joy. It's plastic cheap joy in just getting in shape and looking good. And then being so reliant on like, do you think I look good? Do you think I look good? Like, yeah. Hey, tell me that I look good. Tell me that I'm okay. It's like, no, you know, that, that's such cheap joy. It, it's so short lasting. And then you're just yes. looking for the next little hit of approval. Mm -hmm. But like when you're grounded within yourself, then you're going to get all those hits of approval way easier, but you won't care about them because you approve of you. And that's really where it comes from. And, and, those and are the bonus. part, this is bonus. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the part you said about gratitude, like feeling your heartbeat and stuff like that. I think that to someone who is not ready for this message and is not ready to take that step in consciousness to, to, to gratitude and appreciation, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, they're going to resist that idea. And they're just going to be like, Oh, that's so stupid. Like, Oh, okay. No, no okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> gratitude for my heart. Like seriously, like that kind of attitude. Um, because it can sound corny if it's not mm -hmm. connected to like the truth of the situation. So like when you're saying gratitude for your heart, it's not just like, love your heart. Like, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. fuck, my heart is doing all this amazing shit. Like, oh my God, I am so thankful for my, yeah. like, it's like grounded. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a gift, man. Yeah, yeah seriously. Gift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which, yeah, that can kind of build upon the thing, but like kind of looking at it, it's like someone to start increasing their body awareness. I think the first thing they should start is how you were saying, it's like check in with yourself, even set like a reminder if you want to take it to like the next level, but whenever you remember, but if you really want to start putting this into practice, set like a, a reminder, like once per hour, would you say maybe once per hour to kind of check in with yourself throughout the day and really like take some deep breaths all the way down, you know, to your like base of your even, spine, you know, and even feel even that. Make it easier, you know, like uh, I forget, I forget what book it's from, but basically they, they talk about how, uh, it's much more important to to do a so a super simple habit that mm -hmm. you guaranteed can follow, and then get the success from following it than to try to go too far too fast and fail after three days because you can't mm -hmm. stick to it. Yeah, one hour doing an alarm for uh, every single hour is kind of more intense. You could work yeah. up to that, but if you try to jump right into that, then maybe after three days you're gonna be like, fuck, these alarms are annoying me. Like I'm tired yeah. of these alarms. You also gotta watch that balance for sure. Yeah. So the balance being like maybe twice a day, maybe three mm -hmm. times a day. If you're gonna meditate, five minutes, three minutes, literally yeah. just the intention of three minutes of sitting down in the morning. You have three minutes, everyone does. Everyone it's does. The intention of sitting down to do it for yeah. three minutes. Mm -hmm. That sets the pace. Right. So set the pace, get some cheap, some not cheap, get some easy wins. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from those easy wins, you can start to build it. So, yeah, I mean, I would literally say three to five minutes every morning mm -hmm. and, and, and no matter how much you want to go further and faster, you want to jump up to 10 minutes or 15 minutes, mm -hmm. stick with three, it's just three minutes every day for yes. two weeks yes. and then check in with yourself twice or three times, twice or three times. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially a good one is whenever <laughs> you, I think that you would agree with that one, right? Oh yeah. So I was coughing, but no, yes. no, no. Oh, well, I was saying oh, you <laughs> yeah, 100% because you have to let that momentum build. You know what I mean? If you don't have momentum or if you try to go too fast, too like far, way too quickly, you're going to burn yourself yeah. out or just exactly. turn into a negative experience. You got to yeah. keep that positive experience. So like the more you actually start to get that positive feedback, you can build and build. And then, yeah. yeah. But, but I think that like, um, I, I think using rather than using like an alarm or something, if you just use the three meals that you have in a day, the two or three meals that you're eating yeah. in a day mm -hmm. as your, as your reminder to mm -hmm. 
to, to, pre, to be present, yes. to come back and, and recognize what your body's feeling. Because that has the dual benefit of being built into your day that whenever you eat, you kind of wait, take a step back. Okay. All right. I'm about to eat. What do I feel in my body? How, mm -hmm. how like feel your body, like pressing against whatever you're sitting on, smell the air, kind of look around at the, the screen of uh, sight, the screen of sight that's around you. Feel, feel your hands. Um, uh, what sounds are you hearing? Yeah. Just trick. Um, what are you feeling inside of your body? Is there something in mm -hmm. your mouth? That kind of thing. You can even close your eyes and still feel where your hand is, which is the coolest thing because that's proprioception, mm -hmm. which is where your body is within space. Yes. And so like if my hand's here and I close my eyes, like I can't see it. I can't like, how am I aware of where my hand is? How can I, I'm aware of doing this? It's because the feeling sensation mm -hmm. throughout my entire body, like you lose touch with that feeling sensation. You lose touch with where your body is in space. That's mm -hmm. why people can literally like, be on their phones and walk into a manhole or walk into like a, a <laughs> yeah, like run into shit mm -hmm. that they're not supposed to run into because they exactly. lose complete connection with where they are in time and space because yes. their mind is so wrapped up in, into whatever they're engaged with. Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. And that's the thing yeah. too. I think it also comes back to like kind of, we touched on this a little bit in the first like episodes of being more proactive throughout your day and like reactive. It's like pulling yourself back in that present moment is giving you that power, giving you back that control to be more proactive and actually check in with yourself as opposed to just being on your phone or just like having everything thrown at you and just be in that stress state, you know, calm yourself down, bring yourself into that present moment, checking in with yourself, puts you in that more proactive state of like, okay, I feel like this. Why do I feel like this? How do I feel like this? And so not even like judging it at first, just letting it come to you and, feeling it and getting that feedback and then you can move on from there in a sense. I think it's the difference between reacting and responding. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if you're reacting to something, it's like an automatic knee jerk. Like I like, uh, it's a, it's a program. Yes. Like it, it's happening before you even realize it's happening. Mm -hmm. But a response is that you allow it to be, you see it in its, in its freedom and its wholeness. You kind of have this respect for it and you say, okay, now, how do I want to respond? And you are free to respond in whatever way you're, um, you is whatever object you're focused on. You are free to be as you are. How do I choose to respond to how you are? Rather yes. than, you're this way. No, I don't like it. Get out of here. Like, <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. And I think even something more um, tangible could be something like, you're checking with yourself and maybe all of a sudden you use, Oh, I'm really tired. I'm foggy. It's the afternoon. Do I reach for another coffee or maybe do I take like a quick power nap? And again, it's coming back to that self diagnosis of like, okay, can I remember what happens if I keep doing more and more coffee? How do I then feel after that? So maybe you know, you make that choice and kind of redirect yourself and catch yourself. Maybe take a quick 15 minute, 20 power nap. You feel so much better and it all circles around and essentially mm -hmm. like this big loop and you keep getting more positive feedback and actually make that change because you're becoming more aware of it, essentially. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think I, one that I'm working on right now is coffee. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've noticed the past few days that I, I keep drinking coffee past the point when it's good for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's, it's like a cheap joy from it. So it's like, I'm going to sit with that and I'm going to be like, okay, why do I want this coffee? Is, mm -hmm. is there, is it really what I want or would I much prefer the joy of health mm -hmm. and of feeling good and not being jittery and like stressed yeah. out and like sweaty, you mm -hmm. know, like as, as good as that, that little dopamine rush that an extra cup of coffee is going to give you. Mm -hmm. And that's great. In the mo in that little moment, you're like, ah, oh, <laughs> oh yeah yeah 100 percent. but like that short little joy followed by the hangover mm -hmm. or like this like all-pervading radiance of health and peace like that which one would you prefer like one is clearly cheap and plastic and has a huge hangover yeah. one is clearly like pure strong lasting mm -hmm. um so it's like once you start to align yourself with that lasting uh you know real joy real enjoyment then it's uh, you don't want the you don't want the cheap thing anymore. Once yes. you've seen real diamond, you can tell the plastic diamond is not real, and you don't want it mm -hmm. anymore. It's yes. only when you don't. It's only when you've never actually experienced the real diamond that you're mm -hmm. afraid of giving up the cheap diamond mm -hmm. because you don't know that there's something so much better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like pretty much the basis of body awareness and like self-diagnosis. You know, you can actually start to wow, like. I feel like shit. And you raise that baseline. You can keep raising yeah. it and raising it. Yeah. 100%. So, so a lot of this, a lot of we talked about has been kind of like consciousness based, uh, very metaphysical. Um, but I at least want to end with some more, more like specifics. So yeah. one that popped in my head is like, um, sweat and specifically like palm sweat or like underarm sweat. Um, mm -hmm. 
that that as a, a form of like adrenal uh, an adrenal reaction yeah um having cold hands and cold feet where you can yes. kind of notice that things clamp up and there there's a, a total body sensation that you can start to feel when you're in a cold hands cold feet state versus mm -hmm. when you're in a warm hands warm feet state there's such a more such a greater relaxation that comes from the warm state mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a big one too the hands and feet i think for somebody listening right now that's the first thing I think it could open some doors of like when your hands are like cold and pale along with your feet too, because I think I remember posting something about this on my Instagram and I had a few comments of like, Oh my God, like that's what that means. I never even thought about that. So mm -hmm. look at those extremities and like how you're feeling and whenever they are cold, say for example, and pale, how do you feel overall? And then start to connect those signals of being in that stress state, because then you can relate and have that awareness of what it feels to be in a really awesome state where your hands and feet are warm. You know, you see the pink at your fingertips because you're having good blood flow, all that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, what other ones can you think of? Yeah. So the hands and feet, um, the sweat, that's really important too. Like the adrenal sweats. Um, like we talked about the daily check-ins, say like it's your meal times, um, journaling is also a really good one too that I liked almost I kind of like the style of like having meditation in the mornings and then having um like the daily check-ins um and then like journaling in like the evenings to kind of like mm -hmm. recap throughout the day but again it's it's whatever is going to bring you into like that present moment to kind of check in because you might journal about like something else not necessarily like how you're feeling but journaling could offer something that you can kind of reflect on that builds on your self-awareness and body awareness I think mm -hmm. for sure definitely mm -hmm. um yeah, and, and I'm also trying to think of some other specific, uh, like, in-the-moment things. Like, okay. uh, I would think that, like, dry mouth, for example, mm -hmm. uh, or, like, mucus in your nose, or, like, mm -hmm. dry eyes, uh, maybe the bags under your eyes. Oh, yeah, the dark circle. Um, yeah. Yeah, those kind of things. Like, the quality of your skin, yeah. your breathing. Are you breathing, like, shallow right now? Are you breathing deep? Uh, mm -hmm. We just did an episode on Another, CO2. Yeah, that's Is a good one, like too, that? with the breathing. Yeah. Um, and, and even just the awareness of breath, like really developing that skill is so important because it will help you to recognize because when you're clav uh, doing clavicle breathing, which is like, mm -hmm. like up here, really high, yeah. uh, you're not filling much of your lungs at all. And you're not getting like that deep parasympathetic connection mm -hmm. when you breathe all the way to your perineum to the very bottom of your spine, all the way down, you can feel your entire yeah. stomach expand and that's massaging your internal organs. Like it's actually giving you a, a physical massage of the organs, which is uh, actually a beneficial thing. Yeah. Um, but also it feel, it helps you feel so relaxed. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's really important to feel that relaxed um, state and become aware of the breathing because then when you are aware of your clavicle breathing, you're going to be aware that you're in a kind of stressed, excited state and you're not in the relaxed, peaceful mm -hmm. state. So like yes. even that awareness is really good. Um, I also wanted to touch on a little bit, like whenever you start to notice these things, like you mentioned, like maybe, um, I don't know, your skin's dry or it feels weird. You have like the bags or a circle under your eyes, or maybe mm -hmm. you have like, I don't know, dandruff or some kind of issue like that. Not, a, I feel like a lot of people's first reaction is to how can I fix this? How can I put that bandaid solution on it? Like, how do I get my skin clear? How do I like, fix these under circles? Well, you can kind of then flip that and, and look deep. And then that's, I kind of use that to look more into my lifestyle you know, just because of out of practice and you know, you and I like constantly looking at this stuff instead of trying to put a bandaid on the solution, that body awareness I think was opening the doors of like, how do I fix this at the foundation instead of just mm -hmm. wanting to put a bandaid on whatever may be my skin having breakouts or something of the sort. It's like, why Absolutely. am I actually having that thing? Yeah. Something Absolutely. To, like think about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, another one that reminded me of, um, I, it reminded me of Austin for some reason. I think he was telling me about it. Um, was that like, how, how much can you squeeze your fist? Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. 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 Like when you wake up in the morning, if you, if you have a hard time, like squeezing your fists, mm -hmm. um, you know, what was it? What is inflammation. It, that supposed to be? Inflammation. That's right. Yeah. It's inflammation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so that can be another really good one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm trying, uh, ringing in your ears. That one's, that one's more noticeable because it's kind of yeah, it's, obvious. Yeah. yeah, it's very obvious. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you guys think of any other cool uh, little like things to pay attention to that can help you with like being aware of your body and being aware of like any any cool little indicators, little mm -hmm. whispers, like you said, Trent, yeah. little whispers of like what your body's telling you, like drop them in the comments because we're I, I want to know more of them too, um, and and become more aware of that. But all in all, like the more Definitely. just aware and present you can be with your body, the more you will be able to. Uh, direct it and to work with it to achieve the state that you want. 
Yes, so keeping it, yourself in alignment and balance. The more, goodness, the more goodness you pour into your body, the more goodness it will multiply and give back mm-hmm. to you. Yes. Yeah. 100%. I love it. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing too. It's like the more you can then work with your body and keep yourself in a balance, you're going to get out what you wanted to do. And ultimately, in the end, instead of trying to force and fight your way there, it's going to exactly. be yeah, balance. And that's like the best of both worlds. Going to be good. Oh, yeah. I like this one. This is a good one. I feel like this could just keep going on for hours and hours. And it, it, prob- it probably could. Um, yeah. Uh, with, and with that too, like if you guys have any topics that sparked in your mind that you'd like us to talk about, um, if you like this kind of talk, I, I mean, we're going to k- keep doing the physiology and the chemistry talks. Like, of course, we're going to, uh, the whole focus of this, um, this podcast and these videos is to help increase your metabolic health and, and help increase uh, the flow of energy through your cells. Um, personally, after seeing some of the things I've seen about how your mind is really the controller of your body, I can't, I, I, the foundation of how your awareness plays into all of this, I think is more fundamental and key than anything else. Um, if, if you follow the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza and, mm-hmm. and many 100%. other of, uh, consciousness and spirituality researchers, you'll see that the science is very quickly proving that all disease starts from the mind and that all disease can be cured from the mind. So yes. it's very interesting to understand how the cells work and how all the nutrients work. And that plays a very important part in it. But it's the difference of playing inside of the game versus coming outside of the game and then tweaking the game from outside of it. So, yeah, I like that. you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So like, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about both sides of the coin here because I think that it's really important if you're, uh, our goal for you is to actually be able to change your health. We're not just trying to have some, some, uh, exercise in intellect where we can just go in circles talking about what the research said like no we want you to be like i had a real change in my life because i became aware of these things and i changed these things and right. had a real impact so we're hoping that you guys can can get those kinds of benefits um so if you like this kind of talk like let us know um 100 let us know any other topics you'd like us to talk about and uh thoughts comments if you like this video give us a thumbs up um please share it with anyone that you think might enjoy it um and don't forget to click subscribe because we're going to be coming out with new videos i think we're going to try to do weekdays monday to friday yeah that'll be awesome i don't want to commit to anything yet yeah so we'll uh we'll see how it goes but yeah so click subscribe just to make sure that you're you're getting our videos as they come out get the Um, updates all that good stuff get the updates get all the good updates uh anything else trent i think that's all man i think that's all that's all too Today at the time um, of filming this, it's Friday. So what's, what's up? I was going to say, have a good weekend. Everyone else listening yeah. to it. It might not be on a Friday you're hearing this. So enjoy your Friday, enjoy your weekend, or enjoy whatever day it may be. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I know I got to work out later. I know you're about to go work out, Trent. So good yep. luck with that workout. Hope you Thank you. Day. Likewise, yeah. but to get it in. Yeah. I'm excited for it. All right, cool. All, All right. right, we'll talk to you guys later. All right. All right, see you, brother.